The never-ending trade speculation around Brandon Ayuk continues as Kyle Shanahan went on KNBR to open up about his thoughts on how everything has been progressing. Now, we've heard from Kyle Shanahan speak in the media in that setting, but this is kind of a more intimate uh, opportunity for questions to be asked to him about the Brandon Ayuk situation and give more thoughtful answers. So... We're going to play a clip from the entire interview. I will link the whole thing in the description below. But if you want to hear what Kyle is saying about Brandon Ayuk, the situation, he even mentions Trent Williams as well. This is how Kyle is viewing this situation as it currently stands. So take a listen as Kyle Shanahan joins Tolbert and Copes on KMBR. Let's get let's let's get through the uh, IU portion of the uh, of the segment here, as if you probably haven't had enough of this. And oh, by the way, uh-huh. I'm gonna let you know. Uh, I've been t- this happens occasionally when I talk so much about one topic, it ends up filtering its way into my dreams. And I just want to let you know that you traded IU to the Bears for Roma Dunze and Lance Briggs. So I think that was a pretty good <laughs> That's a hell of a dream, man. <laughs> I'm surprised Gail Lance... Sayers didn't show up in that. No, he didn't. No, Gail Sayers was not a part of the deal, but Lance Briggs uh-huh. was. And I woke up and go, damn, how long has that dude been retired? He's been, he's been gone a long time. So. Oh, with the dreams, I can relate to it, man. <laughs> <laughs> how is this? Let me ask you this. Has this been, it's been characterized as you're getting annoyed with this, frustrated, fed up. How would you characterize it? Are any of those accurate? I mean, the, the situation for me, I mean, you're always frustrated when a guy's not in. I mean, we've had that almost each year here for a number of years, so it's it's nothing new in that part. I mean, as a coach, you want to go out there and you want everything to be said and to feel good about it, but like I said at the beginning, I mean, I came into the situation understanding that it could be like this, um, so we've prepared for that. It's I try to treat it as, um, you know, I've, I've been in situations where you have everything set in your head how it's going to go and stuff, and then all of a sudden, sudden someone tears an ACL or gets hurt. Someone you were counting on being there, and you got to you got to adjust. And so when you come into a camp like that, you kind of just treat it that's how it is, and you try to treat each day like that. And the good thing is he didn't, uh, so you're always holding out hope that it all can work out and uh, you can get back what you were hoping for. But you take it one day at a time, and you try to let it all take care of itself. But this is something that wasn't a surprise going in. Is there still in your mind that hope there that uh, things can get resolved and you guys can move on? Oh, of course. I mean, in, in the perfect world, you'd love all that to happen. Uh, but there's a lot of sides to it. Um, you know, there's it's us, what we want, it's what mm-hmm. he wants. There's a whole contract and stuff to that. And um, it is the... It's a tough business part of this league, and some years it can be harder than others. This is a very difficult one, but it's something you're always holding out, holding out hope for. Well, I'll do the same thing and just yep. get this one out of the way with Trent Williams and the left tackle situation. Obviously, you mentioned at the beginning of camp that you prepared for it a little bit, that it's a possibility. Where do you think st- things stand right there for you right now at left tackle? Um, I mean, no different. There's nothing to add with what's going on with Trent, but what has been good is all the reps Jalen Moore's been getting. Um, you know, Jalen, you know, usually Wednesday is Jalen's day because we rest Trent on Wednesdays during the season, and he gets a lot of work that day. Um and, but this camp, I mean, he's been going against Bosa and all these guys um, going with the ones throughout every day. And he's gotten a lot better here each year. And I think just watching him camp, this is this has helped him a ton. Very similar in a situation with our safeties, you know, just Huff not being in there. It allows guys to go against some tougher competition. And it's harder at first, uh, but you kind of get used to going against it every day. And the starter never it doesn't come back. And you kind of get used to how big that is. And I think it prepares you more for those real NFL games. So back to uh, Ayuk, if, if things don't work out, how do you make sure you get fair value? I mean, that, that's what you always try for. You try to get, you know, if it doesn't work out, you, you try as hard as you can to get fair value, whether it's fair value for the future, fair value for now. Uh, mm-hmm. And you're always hoping that it's both. And there's got to be two teams tied to that. And yep. BA's also got to agree on that, too. So anytime that takes three things, it's not, not that easy. That's why we're looking at every possibility and really hoping that when it's all said and done, it's the best thing for the 49ers and the best thing for B.A. Yeah, because, I mean, that's part of it. It's not just him being able to work out a contract, if not with you, with somebody. But 
you got to get you. They got to have something that that you want uh, in, in return, because that's what I've been saying. Kyle is like you guys are championship contenders again this year and certainly you don't want to do anything that jeopardizes that or makes you worse off going into this year how much does that factor into what you guys would do or don't do just being able to be at that level where you feel like hey we're we're still one of the teams and i really do think you would be anyway but we're one of the teams that's going to be able to compete for a super bowl well definitely and even if you aren't viewed that way i mean that that's why it's even other teams that aren't viewed like that it's always still tough to do that stuff at this time of year you know Mm because you have your team set you're trying to go into it and everyone always has the future in the back of their mind but you're always thinking about the present too and the present is the most important and when you think about that it's it's one game at a time and it's one season you want to do it everything you can to uh, maximize that opportunity which is everyone's goal and that's to win a super bowl and we feel we do have a good team returning be able to be a huge part of that that's why Mm -hmm. we're hoping that can work out but you also got to deal with the reality of what the situation is and we're still working through that and trying to see how that can end up and hopefully it'll it'll be a good situation uh, like i said for both sides when it's said and done all right, last one on this, and we'll move on to some other stuff. Uh, would you expect slash hope that this is resolved sooner rather than later? I mean, I hope it is sooner than later. Yeah. But right, <laughs> right right now, I mean, I don't have any expectations. That, that's kind of yeah. how I stay. That's how I stay. Um, Sane? sane and focus on being a good coach for our team. You know, if I sit there and come in every morning and expect, something to happen and and sitting there just waiting on and thinking about it uh that's when i won't do my job the right way as a head coach of this team um so i hope it does man yeah. that would be awesome to wake up one day and know we have this solved but yeah. i try to come in each day and unless there's something um relevant or something that has happened that i got to be a part of and really discuss which um, doesn't happen very much right yeah. now um then i'm trying to keep it in the back of my mind kind of out of it and um just focus on the players that are here right now got it yeah, Kyle, what do you look for in a wide receiver when you know that things are clicking for them? Because it didn't happen for B.A. right away when he came in after you guys drafted him in the first round. Now you're evaluating Ricky Pearsall right now as he comes in as a first-round draft pick. You may have to rely on him more than you anticipated this year. How do you know that someone's ready to take those snaps at that position for you? Well, I mean, it starts out with just their ability. I mean, that's how you evaluate guys. And, you know, ability usually starts with how capable, you know, from a speed standpoint, from foot quickness, from hands, from size, um, whatever it is, how capable are they of separating? Um, and then you get into how good of a football player they are. You know, how consistent are they? You know, it's not always man coverage. It's more often zone. Um, how many mistakes do they make? How, how reliable can they be in these games? And that takes time for everybody. Um, the more you play, the more you see guys in practice do it consistently, the more confidence you get for those games. And um, it never comes right away. or ex- It's extremely rare to come right away, not just a receiver, but all positions. But the more you can put those in those competitive situations in camp, um, the more you can get the pads on and really challenge guys where I always, you know, you get wide receivers and who come to the NFL and when they get touched, they're used to a flag going and they're being holding. And, you know, I, I think I feel the same way. I think there should be. Um, but after 20 years of doing it, you, you know, there's not going to be the majority of the time. And you got to get that mindset that it's not always just about beating someone. It's about really playing the game, ending with the ball in your hands and getting up the field. And there's lots of ways to do that. And there's adjustment when it comes to playing at this level compared to any other level um, previously. So obviously Kyle Shanahan isn't going to come on here and speak definitively about a very fluid situation. You expect him to keep things open-ended. He's obviously open to talking about the situation as it is, as the 49ers, you know, never saying never, right? When we say that on this channel all the time, you can never say never about anything in the NFL, although it doesn't feel like it's trending towards Brandon Ayuk returning, he says, of course, there's an opportunity that maybe something could happen. But he also talks about what happens if, you know, you do move on and what you're looking for and getting a fair trade, not only for in returns of uh, in terms of compensation, but a fair place for him to land and a fair contract value, all those different types of things that go into this entire situation. So there wasn't anything that was earth shattering or groundbreaking about this particular situation. But again, it Kyle's just giving his honest feedback about the situation. And I'm curious to know what you guys thought about it. And as I said before, 
If you want to listen to the entire clip, you can go check it out in KMBR's podcast section on their website. You'll find that link in the description of this video so you can check out the whole thing. But again, just let me know what you guys think about this. What do you think about what Kyle had to say? Was there anything that stood out to you specifically that maybe ha has made you think about this situation differently at all, whether one way or the other in terms of Brandon Ayuk being traded or potentially staying? I'm really curious to know what you guys have to say. So light up those comments below. And as always, make sure to like and subscribe for more updates.